All right, you've seen the title of the video. Are you using your snow foam incorrectly? Well, don't worry because Science McSporin is here to work it out for you. I actually have it written down. I have done the research. I am ready to tell you whether or not you're using it wrong. And spoiler alert, a lot of you are. All right, don't panic. Don't get your knickers on a twist just yet, okay? What it's all about is the fact that we don't have all of the information, or at least, well, that's a lie. Maybe we do have the information, but we are not encouraged to learn more about it. The snow foam manufacturer will tell you a generic dilution ratio. That's fine. By the way, if I said to you, what would you use your snow foam, Lance? I think most of you are going to say the magic numbers, 10 to one. And that is pretty normal. It's a fairly industry standard dilution ratio. That's what goes into the snow foam lance. That's how you mix it in there. But that is not the whole story because snow foam lance manufacturers are all very similar. All the construction is very similar, but how they work, just like a recipe, lots of people can make a mince pie, but are the ingredients exactly the same? Do they change? Is there more of something or less of something? That is the same situation with snow foam lances. Also, you have to consider the fact that the pressure washer you are using is different perhaps to the one that I'm using. So when you take all of these different things into account, the type of dilution ratio that the manufacturer of the snow foam recommends, then how much your snow foam lance will dilute that again, that's an important one, and also the flow rate of your pressure washer. With all that in mind, there is so much to divulge with this. There's so much to be able to process. I'm going to try and break it down for you and make it relatively simple and straightforward. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how does a snow foam lance actually work? What's it made of? What's, what's the story behind it? What goes on with all this magic? It's not really magic. It's just a bit of technology. So first of all, you've got your bottle. That is where you will mix up your snow foam solution. You will mix it up however the manufacturer of your snow foam recommends. 10 to 1, 9 to 1, 20 to 1, however they want to do it. They will give you a general guidance. Some snow foam manufacturers will also give you a panel impact ratio. And that is where things get very much more interesting because that allows you to tune the dilution correctly for your snow foam lance so that the foam that comes out of the end of the lance is the right strength, that right strength of product to be able to do something on your car. So first of all, this is the bottle. That's where you're going to mix it up in. Generally speaking, they're around about one liter. They are not all one liter. So I'll come to that later on. Then uh, inside that is what you will screw or onto that is what you'll screw the main, the main housing here. Okay, so what you've got at the end is your pickup pipe. This is what will transport solution up here. You've got a connector end here. This is what will connect to your pressure washers, uh, main gun, lance, whatever it is you've got. Then in behind that connector in this first section is a small thing called an orifice, which some of them can be changed to uh, get a, a higher flow or a lower flow or higher pressure, lower pressure of water jet going through there. So you've got all the water forcing in here and going into a very, very tiny hole, which then goes into this little chamber here. And in this chamber underneath it, that is where the pickup pipe connects into. So what's going to happen here is that flow of water rushing through there at very high pressure and high speed is going to create negative pressure, which is suction. And that's what brings the, the solution, the snow foam product up the pickup pipe. So that forcing out of water very quickly draws the liquid, the snow foam up here. It mixes in that chamber, which then gets blasted out of a small hole at the front. And then here you have the uh, the deflector plates, and these are the plates that can open and closed to uh, basically deflect the jet from, if it's wide open, for example, if it's wide open all the way, you'll actually see the hole right in the middle there, and it'll come out as a jet. And if you close those down, they happen to interfere with the jet and turn it into a fan. And that's how you get the fan spray on your snow foam lance. All right. Now, what I'm talking about this, why am, I, why am I discussing this? There is a good reason for this. 
Like I said, different recipes call for different amounts of ingredients, for example. And in this situation, as far as snow foam lances go, they all draw their product up that pickup pipe. <laughs> they all draw their product up that pickup pipe and into the housing of the mechanism, into this little chamber at different rates. They all have this generic standard manufacturing style, this design, but how much they bring that product up and introduce it into the flow of water here, that is different for each manufacturer. It is not an industry standard. So that is where we get differences of panel impact ratio. That is what you get, which actually comes out the end of the nozzle. So if you've mixed up your snow foam in the bottle at 10 to one, and you've got your nozzle wide open for the most amount of foam coming through, the most amount of product, that's going to run through there at a certain rate. It's then going to be picked up and mixed with more water. So what you get coming out of here is not a 10 to one dilution ratio because it gets diluted again by the water traveling through that's carrying it, that mixes it, that creates the foam, and then it gets onto your car. So what exits, what enters is 10 to one, but what exits and hits your car's paint is different. That's where we get to some of the interesting science. Now, like I said, I've already worked out the flow rates for each of the five lances that I own here, but I'll give you an idea. I'll help you work out yours as well, take measurements and things. But I just want to give you an idea of the disparity between these five different lances. So on one end of the spectrum here, the uh, detailed online snow foam lance, it doesn't hold a full litre, it holds 975 millilitres of water. But in order to fully empty the bottle in here to work out the flow rate, it required a total of 17.3 litres is what ended up in the bucket. On the other end of the spectrum, the dual snow foam lance here, this thing holds 940 millilitres of water, product, whatever, and only 9.2 litres of water ended up in the bucket. So that's almost half the amount of water that appeared from the detailed online. What that means, for some of you, you already worked this out, is the flow rate or the introduction rate or the suction rate or whatever you want to call it of the dual snow foam lance is double that practically of the detailed online. So the product going through here, if we were using 10 to one snow foam uh, measurements in the lances, so that's 90 milliliters to 910 milliliters of water, let's just say for argument's sake, I know they don't hold a full liter, these for example, but let's just say we've worked them out at 10 to one in each one. The product coming out of the end of the nozzle on the dual lance is going to be twice as strong as it will be from the detailed online because it's introducing it into the flow of water at a much faster rate, okay? That is really interesting. It means that you could use a snow foam, just like your best mate, you and your best mate both using them, but they've got different lances. If you've got these two different lances, you're gonna get different results because the strength of the product that hits the panel is going to be different, okay? Just to give you an idea of the others here, the eBay special, delivered 12.7 liters of water. The MJJC version one delivered 10.2 and the version two, 9.5 liters. So that means that this thing is introducing the product into the stream of water at a much slower rate than any of these others. That means that a 10 to one dilution here going through will be even more diluted it will be weaker because you're just dropping it in a small amount into that flow at a time. Now, okay, if you want to work this out for yourself so that you know that the snow foam that's getting onto your panel is a good strength. If you use a snow foam which requires a panel impact ratio, if you, the manufacturer mentions a panel impact ratio, that's great because that helps you work out exactly what it is you need for your individual setup. Remember the pressure washer that you're using will also make a difference because of the flow rate and maybe you've got good water pressure, maybe you've got poor water pressure at your house. So that could also have an impact on it as well. So panel impact ratio really helps you dial it down to what you need specifically individually rather than just coming up with a generic 10 to one dilution ratio. Okay, so let's cover this then very quickly. How do you measure it yourself? 
If you don't want to listen to me waffle on, if you're glazing over already, I'll leave a link down in the description to a website which will give you all of this information in a very simple, straightforward, easy to work out, easy to follow. Essentially, what you're gonna do is take your snow foam lance, then fill it to the top, fill it to the brim, and then put everything back into it. You see the pickup pipe here? This actually uh, will displace water. It takes up room. So when you put it in there, it's gonna push some water out, okay? Then fully screw it down, then unscrew it again and measure how much water you've got in there. If you've got more than a litre, brilliant, we're only going to be using a litre. If you've got less than a litre, it might be worth making a note of that. Take a note, how much does your snow foam lance actually hold because that could have an impact on the total dilution. So then, fill it back up again to the maximum, whether it's the one litre or as much as it would normally hold. Put everything back together again and connect it up to your pressure washer. Then get yourself your nice big bucket. Your wash bucket is usually good enough. Drop the nozzle into the bucket, switch on your pressure washer, squeeze the trigger and let it rip. And you're going to watch the water level going down. By the way, make sure your, your dial is wide open at the top. We want to find out what the maximum flow rate is. So you'll watch it and watch it and watch it until it eventually empties. Once it empties, you're going to stop, grab your measuring jug and you're going to measure out how much water was put into the bucket, okay? That will help you figure out what your flow rate is. Then, for the final dilution rate or the panel impact ratio, let me ask you a second here. Some of you are gonna ask, have you tried built hammer auto foam? <laughs> yes, I have, okay? I've had it for a very, very long time. Probably longer than some of you guys. It's not the best snow foam in the world because so many people pick it up and just use it at 10 to one and it's wrong, okay? Built Hamber recommend 4% dilution ratio for this, which is what I've used for the basis of the, uh, the panel impact ratio for this test. So let's figure out how do you work out 4% for your snow foam lance as well. I've already worked that out as well. What you're going to do is work out, once you've written down how much water was in your bucket, turn that into milliliters, not liters. So for example, we'll talk about the detailed online one here, 17.3 liters, that's 17,300 milliliters. You're going to work out 4% of that. The easy way to do it, if you're not good at maths like me, divide it by 100, that gives you 100%, then multiply it by four, if it's 4% that you're looking for. That gets you, for this particular snow foam lance, 692 milliliters, of snow foam. Let that sink in for a minute, okay? 10 to one is what? 90 mil to 910 mil of water in a one liter bottle, right? That is 10 to one. One, so 90 mil, 600, nearly 700 milliliters that goes into this bottle needs to be pure snow foam, undiluted snow foam. Then fill the rest up to its top, which in this case is 975 mil, fill the rest up there with water. That's how strong it needs to be in that bottle for the product that comes out of the end and makes its way through the air and onto your car's paint to be 4%, all right? On the opposite end of the spectrum, the dual lance here needs 368 milliliters of snow foam, built hamber, auto foam there and the rest of it being water up until its maximum of 940 mil. So what that tells you there is you're going to need less in this bottle, but that bottle is going to empty twice as fast as this one. Uh, you see, a lot of people look at this and they're going to say, well, this one needs more than that one. So I should be using that one. Yeah, but you're only going to get 9.2 liters total flow through that thing before the bottle empties itself. That means that could be one decent sized car. It might be one and a half Fiestas, for example. Whereas the detailed online, well, although it brings it through really slowly and you need a really strong solution in there, that could last you two or three cars. So you get to figure out, now at the end of the day, they're all going to work out much and such the same. It's really down to how much do you actually care about the strength of a product that hits your paint, and also, does it matter to you if you rip through a bottle very quickly and maybe have to refill it or have 
product left in your bottle at the end of the day. This could mean that you could cut that down to half. Half a bottle in here would last the same amount of time as a whole bottle in here. So this is where it gets really, really interesting. Now, snow foam manufacturers are very generic with their numbers and they just mostly say 10 to one and that's about it. Very few actually give you dilution ratios. But if you care about the strength of the product that hits your paint, or if you've been in these situations, and I know this happened to me and many other reviewers where I will test a snow foam with one of my lances, fire it onto the car and you don't get the same performance that I do. You might be messaging me in the comments and saying, I tried it, it didn't work at all, at all for me. It was, it was thin, it was runny, it was watery, I didn't get the same thickness or the same consistency that I wanted. It didn't give me the same cleaning power, for example. Well, that's right, because you are not exactly very likely to be using exactly the same pressure washer, flow of water in your house and snow foam lance that I'm using. All of these things are factors to take into account. That is why panel impact ratio is actually incredibly useful to those of us who really care about how the product is being used. So 10 to one in this thing will be very strong, but I'm not gonna have much left there. 10 to one in here will be very weak, but it'll last me a long time. I don't have to refill the bottle for a long time. And it's not just snow foams. You have to think about other things like shampoos that you might want to spray onto the car before you get around to the contact wash to add a little bit of extra slickness, for example. What about lance applied products like lance applied sealants? You'll find that a lance applied sealant will be ripped through and it'll be very strongly applied with the dual. It will be very weakly applied with the detailed online and it'll be somewhere in the middle here. So these are all things to take into consideration if you are serious about knowing all about your car care situation. But I would love to know if you guys go ahead and do this, if you work it out yourself, then please get in touch, get in the comments and tell me what kind of flow rate do you have? If you're using a snow foam at 4%, for example, how does it go? How much water did you have to rip through? Does your snow foam lance really power through the product? Or is it quite frugal? Does it use very little? I'm really, really interested to know because I, I'm a geek and I like these kind of things. But if you guys found this video helpful, useful, interesting in any way, please go ahead, smash the like button, click the subscribe button, ring the notification bell. Thanks very much for coming along. I've been Specky. I'll see you guys in the next video.